Hello, this is Pamela, and you are on Pamela's Adoring Crochet. I'd like to say welcome to my channel and welcome to my yarn room. Well, today is a video where I finally get to show off the racetrack rug <laughs> that I have worked on. Um, I actually started on like maybe three different times before I finally got it right on how to get started. And both times I was pretty much invested in it and still had to turn around and frog it all out and start over but three times a charm because I finally got it right. So grab you a cup of coffee, grab you something to drink, sit back and relax, and let's just enjoy some good old yarny talk. I am drinking out of a cup that I actually gave my sister Tanya uh, a few years back. Well, probably quite a while back, <laughs> more than a few years. But anyway, she is letting me borrow this for one of my intro videos. So thank you so much, Tanya. It says, side by side or miles apart, we are sisters connected by heart. And so this does belong to my sister, Tanya. And like I said, she's letting me borrow it. So thank you so much, Tanya. Uh, today I am drinking Starbucks caramel coffee. Mm. Oh, this is so good. Um, let's see, what do I have today? Um, besides the racetrack rug. One of the things is I did a video last week, a tutorial, if you have not seen it, and it is this stitch right here. This is the um, Clusters Over Easy Stitch. Let's see if I can get it up close enough for you. There we go. And I did this in the purple as well. So if you're interested in learning this, it's just a two row repeat. And I'm telling you, this stitch is very easy. So I will be making a wrap in this stitch with some uh, thinner yarn. And um, so be, look, be looking forward to that tutorial coming up because I'm pretty excited about that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, and don't forget to go and watch that video because that stitch would be great for uh, blankets, scarves, all kinds of stuff. And you will be sure and want to know this so that you can incorporate this in some uh, wearables and different types of things. Okay, the other thing is, I almost forgot to say this. I come across this. It says, what do you call an unmarried stitch? <laughs> A single crochet. Mm, you guys know you love that. Okay, so moving on. The racetrack rug, let me go ahead and uh, show that to you guys. So let's go ahead and let it roll. So here's the finished rug. This measures 35 by 55, and I used an L hook. And I just think it's so cool. Look at this. It's just beautiful. So I placed some toys on here to kind of give you an idea. Yes, guys, it's finally done. So I'm keeping this here at Gigi's house. So when my grandkids come over, they will have this nice little rug that they can play their cars on. So I would highly recommend making this rug, guys. Takes two strands of yarn at one time. And it's just very nice. That's it, guys. Mm, isn't that amazing? I just love it. It turned out Oh my gosh, it turned out perfect. It was well worth having to restart this at least three times. It was well worth it because I plan on keeping that rug here at my house for my grandchildren. And um, I'm going to keep it washed up. You know, it's going to stay, like I will pull it out and bring it into the living room space where I'm at. And that way I can get down there with the kids and um, play with the little rug with them. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be years of enjoyment. So um, I really hope I can take good care of it because <laughs> it was a lot of work. But uh, the website is ekayg.com and you can just type in racetrack rug. But I will leave the link in the description box below. Now, the yarn that I used was Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I used black, white, and spring green. Um, you will need to look at the pattern uh, to find out about how many yardage you need. Um, I can't remember. I, I know I bought, I'm pretty sure I bought three black, maybe three green, and either one or two white. I can't remember now. 
But anyway, I did not use all that, but except for the spring green. I used almost all the spring green and just had a, like a little ball left on that one. But um, yeah, <laughs> um, if you want to make that, please make it. You will enjoy it. It was a lot of fun watching it come together. So, okay guys, let's go ahead and do our, mm, <laughs> I did it again, our daily Bible devotional, um, what is the title of that? It's not the 365 days of prayer. Um, anyway, let's go look at, let's listen to this devotion. <laughs> God's timing. We are saved by trusting, and trusting means looking forward to getting something we don't yet have. For a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he will get it. But if we must keep trusting God for something that hasn't happened yet, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. Romans 8, 24 and 25. It's hard to wait for, well, anything. We can have almost anything we want immediately. Sometimes even waiting longer than two days to receive our order in the mail seems way too long. We can gain some great perspective when we think about how life was lived hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Mail took months to travel. Items were all made to order and food was only delivered to your doorway if it accompanied out-of-town guests. We have become pretty impatient, haven't we? It's hard to wait for God's timing. Even when we are waiting for good things, we think we shouldn't have to wait for long. Going on a missions trip, starting a job in ministry, leading a small group, marrying the right person. Doesn't God want those things for us sooner rather than later? Trusting in God's timing means you believe that God won't let an opportunity slip by unless it's not one He wants you to experience. Father, I admit it is hard for me to wait for anything. Help me to be patient and trust that you will give me everything I need when I need it. Okay, guys, um, I'm so glad that you are enjoying that as much as I enjoy reading that to you guys. I just struggle with the title of the book is all, so I apologize for that. Um, for some reason, the, that title just isn't sticking, and we are already in um, April. So, <laughs> and I started this in January and still can't remember the title of that book. But um, anyway... <laughs> All right, guys, um, let's see what to look forward to. Tomorrow is Whip Caddy Wednesday. Be sure and submit all of your whip carts and your whip space and show us all the different things that you guys are working on and keep us inspired. Mm. Let's see what I'm working on. I plan on a little by little. I'm still working on that corner to corner blanket uh, with the Red Heart Ombre yarn. And let's see. Mm, oh yeah, I'm working on a special project from Hobie. I will be releasing that video on the 17th of this month. So be sure and look for that. Um, they have some new yarn out. And so I'm very, very excited to try it. Matter of fact, I get to dig it out and try it tonight or this afternoon or whatever. So I'm really looking forward to that. I already have a pattern that my daughter had bought for me off of Etsy. And that's one of the projects I'm not going to tell you because I want it to be a surprise of what I'm working on. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to the new stitch that I have coming out this week. And um, the, the wrap. <laughs> look forward to the wrap that I have coming. So yeah, that's all that I have for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Just remember to live life, have fun, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.